You know, I've heard every excuse there is for crashing in the last 50 years of my RC flying career. Do these sound familiar? It couldn't be me. This thing can't fly. Something quit. Piece of junk. Waste of money. The radio quit. I was glitched with radio interference. But never do I hear, I pulled up instead of down. I lost it in the sun. I forgot to charge the batteries. I ran it out of gas. I thought it was upside down. It was too windy to fly. I stepped on the antenna as it took off. I needed more rubber bands on the wing. I should have checked the motor mounts. I can't even tell if it's coming or going. Never do we hear that. I learned how to fly my hyperfly while inventing it. I never gave up. That is what RC flying is all about. Not giving up and not blaming the manufacturers for your mistakes. Reputable manufacturers make stuff that works or they'd be out of business quick. So you can see in this movie, hyperflies could hover, turn in any direction, and even handle strong winds. But only if you had the hand and eye coordination and patience to learn how. Plenty of folks can't and will never be able to fly RC. So don't be bashing unless you're a capable flyer. Hi folks, I'm Dave Herbert and welcome to Mr. Herbert's Science Class. Today we're going to talk about the hyperfly again. A lot of people have asked me if it would hover, how does it work. I'm going to revisit it again and show you some things and show you this fly. This is the original one. The reason this was invented is because 25 years ago when we were trying to learn to fly model helicopters, my friends who flew airplanes watched as I struggled and struggled and all of us did learn to hover without gyros, without any computer radios. We had to really uh, struggle to learn how to hover. And they all wanted to fly a helicopter and in order to do that without having to learn to hover, I came up with the hyperfly. And the way this works is it flies in forward flight all the time. It will only hover if the wind is blowing heavy enough like a five knot headwind. Okay, and the way it works is I put a tail rotor back here, basically made out of what a frisbee looks like. Same airfoil, so you have lift when you're flying in this direction, counteracting the torque. It's basically a weather vane. As long as the wind is blowing, you've got a weather vane. If you're going forward like this, it's a weather vane. The tail is going to stay back here. It can't get in front. So it's pretty easy to fly. Two channels, full power, and you would take and just hand launch it into forward flight. And when it was time to land, you would come around and land it like a regular conventional airplane on the runway, just come sliding in. And when you did, the switch, the risk whisker switch on the bottom that I put on there would shut off and keep the helicopter from crashing. It worked pretty really good for the people who use single stick radios on the right. People who tried to buy, uh, tried to fly it with the uh, two stick chip radios had trouble with it. And uh, like all things, it takes practice to learn how to fly these things. All machines take practice to learn how to fly them. Uh, the people that uh, usually crashed right away always blame the manufacturer. And I'm going to show you that this actually does fly pretty good. And uh, Aben was featured in Aviation the Space Week Technology in Kyosho, sold uh, hundreds of thousands of these things. So uh, the way it worked again, you pull down the uh, whisker switch on the bottom, the blades would go into forward flight, you would hand launch it into forward flight, away it would go. This is the original kit. It was given it to me by Aki Suzuki, the president of Kyosho. And uh, I'll show you just quickly what was inside of here. We had the uh, fuselage, motor gear set, blades, all of the parts that had to be all assembled. The second version that came out was the Hyperfly Apache, also given to me by Aki Suzuki. I don't have any hardware in here, but I do think I do have a, a whole body assembly. Now before all that happened, this was my early prototype. Again, I put the plastic plate on the back to turn it into a weather vane. It would hang, and on this, there's where I had the uh, radio gear, and of course the switch on the bottom here that would shut it off when you would uh, land. If you look at the tail on the back of this, you'll see that it is exactly the same size and curvature as a Frisbee, which we all know has airfoil and lift when it's flying this way. If it's flying this way, then it's going to want to lift this way and turn it and counteract the torque. So as long as you keep moving, it all work very well. This is what it looked like inside. We had only NICAD batteries then, 1100 milliamp, 8.4 volts, and the on-off switch 
and there was actually a diode that was a BEC for the radio. Two channel only, that's all you needed. Yosho then came out with different versions. This was the Manta body, and if you look at the tail on this, you'll see that it also has this curve in it, which is uh, airfoil. So when flying in forward flight, it would uh, counteract the torque of the main motor. Now I've modified this one and actually have put a speed controller in it. I'm using Electrofly from Great Plains, 25 amp speed control. And uh, again, I always have 20 amp fuses and everything. I'm using a three cell LiPo and uh, it all balances out pretty good. And this particular one, I've put wheels on the bottom so when I land, it doesn't scrape in. First of all, I gotta put my pilot in because I don't ever fly any of my airplanes without pilots. Okay, let's no go. No tail rotor. The wind is definitely that way. Don't turn it off you. It's on page two. <laughs> Okay, there's a left turn, the sun. no tail rotor, left turn, how about a right turn, right turn, left turn. Wind is top. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> pretty wild, huh? Yeah. I put a arming switch on the bottom, which I took off of this. At least it was right here. So when you did yeah. come in and land it, it would just shut off. Got the head cam on. It's again a little bit windy today, but uh, gonna try and fly the Hyperfly. No tail rotor, and uh, let's see how this runs today and how it flies with no tail. Here we go. Here you can definitely see that it's hovering. People who say it won't hover. No tail rotor. Very windy. Ah. Uh -huh. 